So, uh, I'm Xavier Rodriguez. Uh, some people know me as Calvaris, and I work at, at Igalia. Igalia is a workaround company, and the, H, the headquarters are here in, in La Coruña. Uh, we are, I lost count on how many people we are, maybe 140 people around the world. As we are a workaround company, most of us are partners of the company, and we are hiring. So this is about WebKit. WebKit is a multi-platform work, uh, browser engine. Um, multi-platform, I mean, means that uh, you, can fa you can have different flavors of WebKit depending on the platform you are on. For example, Apple has, of course, uh, its own WebKit flavors. And, uh, well, the ones that use GStreamer are WP and the GTK ports. So the WebKit architecture is more or less like this. So you have the application, in this case, what you usually call in a browser the Chrome. That is not just Google Chrome. <laughs> the Chrome is the, 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 um, just, you know, the toolbars and everything that runs the, the browser. And then you have WebKit, which is uh, like the ledger that is taking care of all the multiprocess and all those, those things. And then you have WebCore. And, uh, that WebCore is the, the one that is doing all the rendering and all, I mean, parsing the CSS, parsing the HTML and all those things. And then you have the JavaScript engine, and then you have the platform code. And that's where the streamer is, in the platform part. The multiprocessor multi architecture of, of WebKit, I mean, this changed a bit this, this last years, but it's more or less like this. So you have the, uh, in, in WebKit 2, this, because there was WebKit 1, which is single, single process, but WebKit 2 is multi-process. And um, so you have um, the UI process. In, in the UI process, you have uh, uh, the, the application and the, the WebKit layer that controls the, the rest of the, of the processes. And then for each uh, website that you are browsing, you can have a different web process. And then you also have different other processes, like the network process, the, some workers process or, or storage process. And something that I forgot to add here is the GPU process, which is becoming important nowadays because it is supposed. I mean, it's, it is supposed to be the process where the where the GPU stuff is going to run, and also the, where the multimedia stuff is going to run. We don't support in GTK and WP the GPU process yet. It will come, I guess. So now I'll talk about the media source extensions. It's usually called, uh, known as MSC. <laughs> And this is a W3, W3C uh, JavaScript API to fit metadata into an HTML media element. It can be video or audio, but yeah, you just yeah, use it for that. Uh, this would be more or less how the architecture of MSE is. So you have a media source that you attach to the, um, uh, to the media element, and from, that, from there you can create one or more source, uh, source buffers usually. I mean, the most common use case is you have one source buffer for audio and one source buffer for video. And each source buffer can have one or more tracks. And then later you decide which, one, uh, which, which tracks you want to render. So the way we do MSC in, in, in the streamer um, ports, uh, we do it in two steps. One step is the, the append. And the, the second step is the, the playback. Why do we do it in two steps? Because after the append, all buffers and everything has to go to the cross-platform code, which is not just the streamer. So we just drop the buffers and everything, the samples. We ship them to WebKit. And then the cross-platform code of WebKit is the one that is going to decide if we need to um, evict any buffers because we are running low memory or all those kind of things. And then we have the playback, which is, I mean, self-explanatory. The, the append, the MSE append is quite easy. What we do is we have an app source. Then we have a dmaxer, usually Qt dmax or a Matroska dmax for WebM. And then we have the app sync. And, uh, well, 
the data maps that that's his job. You, uh, sometimes we also have a parser, depending on the content. If it's encrypted, we don't have the parser. If it's not encrypted, then usually we have the parser there. And then, well, this is the, the like the real representation of the of the pipeline. You'll see that there's a well, there's also a type find if I'm not mistaken. Well, you can you can read it. Well, this is the identity, the DD maxer, and that's I think that's that's type find. Type find. And uh, then there comes the playback. The playback is <laughs> that's easy, right? <laughs> I mean. Uh, the intention is not that you can read it. The intention is that you can see it's a big complex pipeline. You can see that there are two branches at the beginning, and the two, uh, like the audio and the video branch, and the, um, when rendering, you also have the, the audio and the video branch. And well, to summarize it, you can see it like this. So we have um, we have. Uh, this stream element that is inside WebKit, that is the WebKit media source. And that, when you feed the data from the append, it's going to create different paths for audio, for video, and then it goes to the code bin. And then sometimes it goes, it goes raw or encoded, depending on the platform you are in. It can go encoded or, or in raw. I'm being very quick, it looks. So regarding encrypted media extensions, it's usually known as EME, and this is uh, a W3C JavaScript API that is DRM for the web. You can have different backends, and well. This is more or less the diagram of how EME works. So you can have the encrypted event or not, I mean, Usually, the, the media data comes from here, from the CDN. And well, you have here the CD, this not, Do not confuse the CDN with the CDM, the different components. So this is a content decryption module known as CDM. And then, uh, well, you have the web server and the license server, et cetera, and also the, the web application. So when you put data into the, um, into the, into the system, you can do it through, I mean, you can do it through in, in two ways. You can do it in the regular playback, or you can use MSC as well, the one that we saw before, to put data into the, into the HTML media element. Then you can have, for example, when the data comes in, uh, the DMAX the is going to, to notice that the, the media is encrypted, so it's going to fire an encrypted event to the application or not. I mean, well, it all, it, it's going to fire the event. But the application can use it or not, because sometimes they already know the data that they need to, I mean, they, they know in advance the initialization data. That is the one they're going to use when they, uh, they do it later here in the generated request. But anyway, you can get the encrypted element, and then you have to do several steps. That is the request in the media, uh, media key system access. Then you create with that. I mean, when you request the media key system access, you do it thinking of one of the different systems that you can have. For example, Wideband, PlayReady, Nagra, or uh, several others that you can have. And then you can create the media keys. The media keys you set it to the to the HTML media element, and then uh, the rest of the magic happens. You create the session, and then uh, from the application, you create the session that creates a, a media, key, media key session. From the media session, um, the application does the generate request to the media key session that invokes a method in the content decryption module, the CDM, that answers the license request, that goes back the, the message to the application, and then the application contacts the, the license server. Then there comes the license back to the application, the application sends back to the media session, that goes back to, down to the CDM, and over and over uh, during the playback. So this is how you know, UML diagram from my university times. My, my wife is proud of this. Uh, well, this is the, like more or less the, the um, 
the UML diagram of how uh, this works in, in, in WebKit. Regarding GStreamer, the only thing that we need to, to care about is these two classes here, which is the decryptor. The decryptor is a GStreamer element inside WebKit that is going to be auto-plugged into the pipeline when the protection caps are seen uh, during playback. So it's going to be auto-plugged, and uh, then it talks to the rest of the architecture to check if the certain media key ID is present. So okay, it tells the CDM, OK, I want to decrypt with this, uh, with this media key. Do you have, do you have it? So uh, the playback can continue, etc. Um, speaking, about, uh, speaking a bit about uh, secure video code path, so, so, sorry, secure, secure video path. I mean, that's needed because sometimes you have HDMI requirements. I mean, you plug something or to a, to a TV, and uh, if you want to watch um, like high resolution content, for example, you can. I mean, you need to go through through something that is the secure video path. Otherwise, for example, if you plug to something that is not trusted by the HDMI um, uh, negotiation, you're, I mean, the, the CDM is not going to allow you to play back maybe higher resolutions. So when you have, a, I don't know, I think it's seven, in Widevine, if, if I'm not mistaken, 720, the, what, what you can get with uh, level three, and if you go to level one, you can get 4K, full HD, etc. And there's uh, something interesting about the um, JavaScript and the and the and well DRM or the or the CDMs is that one of the requirements for all this to to work is that JavaScript cannot run in the same process as the decryption, so that you cannot do nasty things and take the content back. So usually. The, the, the way to achieve this is through hardware elements. I mean, you have uh, hardware capable of decrypting, decoding, and rendering. So what you get in the, in the pipeline is just an element. Or maybe you have several elements, but once you put those buffers into that system, what you get in, the, in your pipeline are just phony buffers. That are, I mean, because the real, the real thing is inside the, the, the hardware already. Because that's needed uh, in order to comply with the secure video path. And I think, yo, I think that's it. I don't have, I, I, I went quite quick. So, do you have any questions? I, I, I just, uh, this, this is this working? Yeah? No? No, I don't think it works. Maybe, maybe. maybe you can repeat this, but you can yeah. you can point out that the the network access is done exclusively uh, through the network process, and that we cannot use like uh, sub elements. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kiki is pointing out something. Uh, yeah. So in WebKit, we cannot do network access by our own. Obviously, we are, we are a web browser. We need, to do, we need to use our own resources to fetch HTTP content. So for regular playback, for example, I mean, we are not using soup HTTP source or anything like that. We have our own, uh, our own source. And uh, yeah, we cannot use uh, for HTTP transport. We have to use the, well, the internal WebKit elements. Any more comments, questions? Really, no questions? Not even, not even by you? OK, I was clear then, right? Or maybe not clear at all. OK, well, thanks.